is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video. It's the beginning of September, so time to give you an update on how we got on in August. And for once, it's been a month where there's quite a few things to be able to share with you rather than just statistics. So there's two new things that have happened in August. In the middle of August, we actually got our new garden solar panels turned on. So we have now another 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, taking us to a total of, what is it, 11.6, 11.7 kilowatts of solar panels with a maximum that's risen from something like a 7.4 kilowatt peak to a 9.4 kilowatt peak in around that region. So a nice chunk of extra power and that's uh, giving us around you know, roughly just under 20% more power, 20% more kilowatt hours a day. So it's working out really, really well so far. If you want to see how particularly it works and how that array pointing in the orientation that it's working compares to our other arrays, then I did a video uh, last week which covers that, which talks about each individual array, which way they're pointing and how many kilowatt hours we're getting from it at what time of day. And uh, that's what it really relates to. It's the curve, the power curve and how many kilowatt hours we're gaining in the morning, the afternoon, lunchtime, all those sort of things. So the new panels are online. They're working really well. The installation, though, isn't absolutely complete. There's some finishing off to be done. Um, I want some additional wiring on those solar panels so I can extend that array and that's not complete yet. So we've got some extra wiring to be done for those panels. And also there's additional batteries. Uh, I've acquired three new Pylon Tech US 5000 5 kilowatt hour batteries. So it's another 15 kilowatt hours of storage going onto my system. That's not connected yet either. So we've got that ongoing. So the system is growing and growing slowly, but the extra power the extra power is it's been really refreshing because it's it's reminded me of that moment when we first got our solar panels and we first saw three kilowatts and thought it was wonderful and then we upgraded and we saw four and five kilowatts of power coming through and it, again it it feels fresh and new and wonderful seeing these new higher numbers so I've, I've had that feeling again instead of seeing six and occasionally seven we've been seeing seven eight and nine kilowatts of generation which has been absolutely fantastic so new numbers new heights more available power just makes things easier so i'm looking forward to getting the final bill i can't believe i'm saying that i'm looking forward to getting the bill for these garden panels and that way i can compare the benefit of installing them in the garden versus the benefit of putting on the roof and how much kilowatt hours we're getting from it versus how much money we're paying for it so that ratio of value in what we're receiving versus how much we're paying out for. So I'm looking forward to finishing the uh, process off and getting all of that final data out to you, but they're online. We've got more power. It is a really good thing. If I have a look right now, we are generating 7.8, almost 7.9 kilowatts and exporting 7.5 kilowatts at the moment because we're not consuming as much as that. You know, at the moment, we're being paid really well for our export, so I'm exporting as much as I can. At a different time of year or on a different tariff, then that may well be consumed by putting it into the car, into the hot water, into the battery, instead of using the grid overnight. So there's lots of flexibility by growing the system, and that's the idea. The other second thing that's been going on is cleaning my solar panels. Um, I made a decision a while ago that I wasn't happy with the quotes that came through for cleaning my solar panels. Previously, I had I thought that they were self-cleaning and when we had a heavy rainstorm, it did clean them. And we went probably four years of the panels being cleaned by themselves, just with the weather. But then last year there was a deposit of some sort of greenish dust and it, it wasn't age related because it was appearing on the same new panels that we'd installed as well as the old ones. So it wasn't age related. Something different was stuck to the panels and wouldn't come off in a wash. It wasn't really affecting performance, but my concern was that it was going to get worse. And because of that material that stuck to the panels, it would encourage more material to stick to the panels and get worse. And if lichen got on there, then it would be a nightmare to get off. So I decided that I was going to clean the panels. And when I got quotes in on a per panel basis, it worked out to 220 to 250 pounds a time to clean them. So once I got that quote in, it suddenly made a few things quite obvious. One, how long does that take? It's about an hour's work for a window cleaner. Um, and that's what solar panel cleaners are typically, the window cleaners, um, to come and clean the panels. So an hour's work, 220, 250 pounds, and all 
kit they're providing is um, a cleaning pole and brush and some ionized water deionized water so it's a soft water that's not going to leave white residue uh, on your panels so i thought you know you can get a plumber for 300 pounds a day or an electrician for 300 pounds a day for seven hours work so 200 250 pounds for an hour's work just seems like a lot of money and you know if, if that's the price if that's what you have to pay then i suppose fair enough but there's an alternative and that's to do it yourself so I, I tested um, a professional window cleaning pole from a friend, Rowley, and uh, successfully washed the panels on my first attempt. It wasn't a brilliant job, uh, but I learned a lot from the first attempt. So I specced up the pole um, a little bit better, a little bit more appropriate for our system here. And I spent £950 on the equipment to clean our solar panels. But at £200 to £250 a clean, then it's only going to take me four cleans and it's paid for itself. So I chickened out of paying for it and went for it myself. I suppose it's a good test. I like to try things myself. I like to think um, of what's good value and cleaning them myself is good value. So if you've got the physical health, if you're capable of doing it, it is a good workout. Then you get your panels cleaned when you want to clean them. Again, I wouldn't want them cleaned in heat while they're hot in the middle of the day, but when you have them cleaned, you have to do it whenever the cleaner uh, can turn up to do it, no doubt. So now that I've got my own pole, I can wait until it's raining or about to rain or it has rained so that the debris is loosened by the rain and it'll be softer and easier to clean. But then also it'll get a free rinse. I don't have to use deionized water. I can use tap water, even though it's hard. Uh, because the rain will then rinse that off and uh, leave them nice and clear and I've, I've done a really i've done a really good job i've left a couple of bits deliberately uh, <laughs> to um, see the difference and you really can tell the difference and this time i've also bought a pad as well as a brush and uh, soaping that up with um, some 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 high quality car cleaner um, so that was soaked up and so i did the edges of the panels to get rid of the debris that the brushes didn't clean fully last time and that's done a really thorough job so i'm very happy with that it took me about two hours to do so i suspect now that i've got some practice now i know what i'm doing i should get closer to that one hour to do it uh yeah 950 pounds is really expensive i spent 200 pounds extra for a 50 foot long pole with my friends was i think it was 44 to 47 feet and it, it just wasn't quite enough to reach the top of my panels um i've got quite a few panels i've got a very steep tall roof and a sloping driveway so the more you stand back to actually gain the vision of the panels because you've got to, obviously got to be able to see what you're doing the further i'm away the lower i'm getting so the higher the pole i need the longer the pole so i needed a 50 foot long pole uh, to do the job and uh, yeah I've gone for a stiffer, higher carbon rate in the pole to have less flex in it and to make it easier to maneuver. And yeah, it is, it is a good pole, it does its job. And, but I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's easy. It's not an easy thing to do. So you've gotta be persistent, you've gotta have some physical strength, you've gotta have full mobility in your shoulders and arms to be able to do it. And you've gotta take care because a 50 foot long pole bouncing around when you get telegraph wires around and getting stuck on a roof that's 50 feet away if you get something stuck up there you're not going to get it back down again so there's a lot of risk and there's a lot of care that you have to take into it so you know if you're thinking of doing it yourself you know think it through carefully um, I think I've done the right thing four cleans and it's paid for itself and I'm happy with the quality that I've been able to do they now do look really clean apart from the bits I left deliberately then uh, they are now fully clean to the exterior. What I haven't done is the black edges of the panels underneath. On the front edge, there's still some green algae. I haven't turned the brush upside down and, and brushed underneath. So that's another job that I'll do soon. But also as well as cleaning the panels, I've been able to clean the windows as well. So buying the pole has really helped. So there you go, two things. The panels are live and I've actually cleaned all of my panels now with my own water fed window cleaning pole a carbon fiber one yep 950 pounds for a stick with a brush on it <laughs> and it's good value who'd have thought it okay moving on to the stats for the month of august 1255 kilowatt hours generated that's amazingly just one kilowatt hour short of a record 1255 
On the far right of this graph with the purple line, you can see that without the new array in the garden, we wouldn't have got close to that record. So it's only because we had a, an extra 130 kilowatt hours, I think, for the garden array that tipped us into this record territory. So it's not just the new array that's made the difference. If you look at this August comparison data, the dark blue lines, 565 kilowatt hours for 2024. August is higher than any other August. 326 kilowatt hours this year for our solar edge array is higher than any other one before. And yet 234 for our third array that we put in, that's the highest we've had as well in any August. So August has been a record month. Who would have guessed it? Because every other month so far seems to have been pretty dull and less than average. This is the day by day chart for our Solis inverter, 3.68 kilowatt inverter, 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels that we generate 565 kilowatt hours. Apologies for the blue wavy line. I was having problems at the time with Solis cloud and couldn't get rid of it. Same for our 2.5 kilowatt Solis inverter. We generate 234 kilowatt hours for the month and the yellow bars there are the day by day generation numbers. Sadly, the day-by-day -day chart for my Solar Edge array is no longer available. Solar Edge support have absolutely cocked it up, trying to improve what I've got there and actually making it worse. So I can only see the monthly number now, 326 kilowatt hours for Solar Edge, 2 kilowatt inverter, 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels. And finally, the day-by-day -day chart for the new six panels in the garden, 2.4 kilowatts on a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. The kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels was 144.87, the best for the year on our 3.9 kilowatt array, 80.69 for the, that's the gable panels and the three over the garage roof, 111.94 pro rated for the uh, garden panels, the new 2.4 kilowatt array versus the Solar Edge 2.4 with no shading issues at all, 135.83. So a very good indication there between the 111 and the 135 as to how these new solar panels in the garden are comparing. Same number of kilowatts in uh, panel size, different inverters, different orientations and shade, just a little bit lower. Very happy with that result. All that extra solar generation means we've exported more than any other month. 1,133 kilowatt hours exported this month. Usage has been quite consistent. In green there, you can see what the house is using, and it's a base load, basically, uh, the minimum amount of consumption. And then the red is the import during the morning. The higher spikes for that is when we're charging uh, the cars, and the more we charge, the higher the spike, etc., and uh, yeah, all the yellow at the bottom of the uh, graph there is how much we're exporting. So on days where there wasn't a lot of sunshine, that's when we didn't export a lot. But if there was a lot of sunshine, we exported loads. Importing from the grid then, 597 kilowatt hours imported on Octopus Intelligent Go at 7 pence a kilowatt hour. 597 at 7 pence and 1133, was it, exported at 15 pence. A very profitable month this month that will be paying for our heating bills in winter. Our usage of energy is quite simple to explain in the summer period. Uh, the eddy, which is heating our Mixergy hot water tank, just 50.3 kilowatt hours. That fine tuning I'm doing, adjusting our Mixergy settings, really is saving some kilowatt hours. 50.3, our lowest amount for heating hot water. 360.3 kilowatt hours charging electric cars. 418.1 kilowatt hours is the house load, including charging the battery. The Zappi, as I said, that's our largest consumption area, 349 kilowatt hours. Air conditioning, we use quite a lot. It was a very hot month, 94.55 kilowatt hours. The kitchen sockets, 60 kilowatt hours. And the Eddy heating our hot water, as I said, 50 kilowatt hours, the lowest we've had. The television consumed 19 kilowatt hours. The main induction hob used 13 kilowatt hours. These are quite standard numbers for us this month. The internet hub, that's our Mixergy, the home assistant, and the internet router hub, 10 kilowatt hours for the month. And that's about it for the individual devices. Sadly, I've tried talking about this summary graph a few times, and uh, in editing, I can't really say much about it because the generation number's wrong, the import's wrong, the export's wrong, <laughs> and the 26% green's wrong. Um, so this one isn't actually that helpful. Other than showing we consumed 216.7 uh, kilowatt hours 
of solar energy and our total consumption was 828 kilowatt hours. So for comparison purposes, I've left this chart in. I'm starting to find every month keeping track of our year-to-date numbers is quite good. 5,561 kilowatt hours exported so far, 5.5 megawatt hours exported. Import though, a lot less, 4,424 kilowatt hours imported at 7 or 7.5 pence for 2024 so far. Different apps showing different things. Uh, This is the Victron app showing our year-to-date view of everything. To the grid, export 5476 kilowatt hours. Import from the grid 4595. You'd think these meters would all be accurate, but they're the same CT clips and the same meters. It is a little confusing. Consumption 5342 and solar 6.616 megawatt hours solar energy so far this year. The monthly views, the inaccuracies don't look so bad. Uh, To the grid export, 1116 from Victron. uh, Import from the grid, 615. Consumption, 715. And solar, 1270 kilowatt hours. So those are a lot closer. As always, with this summary chart from Victron, what I'm looking at is the blue area uh, at the top. And the deeper the blue area, the more of the battery I'm using each day. And the higher the blue goes to the top, then I'm charging the battery to 100%. As you can see, I'm not charging to 100% very often, and I haven't been using the battery very much for export. So I've been not maximizing the amount of export payments that I could be getting from the battery. A nice history graph from Home Assistant saves the day, showing our battery state of charge, how full our home storage batteries, the Pylon Tech batteries that we have. And as you can see, it goes up to 100%, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times, 11 days we went to 100%, and the worst was down to about 25% state of charge, where I dumped just about everything out of the battery. Onto the data from our Mixergy hot water tanks. We've got a cold water section of the tank and a hot water section. The cold water temperature has been close to 20 degrees the entire month. The hot water section only dips down to um, 30 degrees on a few days when I've emptied the tank completely. So I'm running it very close to empty a lot of the time now, as you can see here with the percentage full chart uh, going all the way down to zero, which is maximizing because if there's no hot water in the tank, then there's no energy loss. So uh, we're doing really well with the Mixer G tank using just 50 kilowatt hours to heat our hot water for the month. I can't believe when we used to use the Eddy for our old tank, it used to be 100 to 130 kilowatt hours was what we were consuming. Lastly then, temperatures. You can see here in Norfolk, we've had a few days where the garage went above 30 degrees and overnight the temperature dropped a few days under 15 degrees. But the house, all the other lines and colours in the middle there staying close to around 20 degrees. The air conditioning system are Toshiba units that are for heating in the winter, air conditioning, cooling in the summer, really have been worth their money this year. As always, thank you so much for watching these videos. YouTube's not being very nice and kind to me at the moment, promoting my videos. The channel's not growing very much uh, subscriber-wise and views-wise because YouTube is restricting how much it's sending these videos out. So please, please click like, please click subscribe, and please leave me a comment uh, below. All of those things really will help the channel. I need to try and overcome the problems with the algorithm. I'm trying to get a few more videos out as well to see whether the frequency of me putting content out will help their algorithm and get back some of that recommendations and uh, some of that extra interest because it's reaching people. If YouTube don't share and recommend these videos, then I haven't got as much reach. And uh, yeah. It just feels wrong that the channel was growing so much, it was almost doubling every year, and suddenly it's just halted. Now that's either me and what I'm doing, or it's YouTube. I'm not 100% sure what it is at the moment, so I'm trying to adjust a few things to try and improve that. So please click like, please subscribe to the channel, please leave a comment below. All of those things will help the channel, and keep us going, keep this content coming. So uh, thank you very much, take care, see you again soon for more energy-related videos. Bye for now. Yep, that's going to be on camera. (laughs) Yes, Nautilus.